All right, guys, we're back for another episode of Kim's Kick-Ass Cooking. I said it right. <laughs> he said I was going to mess up. But so, <laughs> uh, oh, jeez. All right, so, Kim, what do we have today? All right, today we're going to be doing two diet-friendly snacks. So a drink and a no-bake peanut butter protein cookie. Oh, yum. Yeah, they're going to be really good. All right. Okay, so first we're gonna do the no-bake peanut butter protein cookies. I actually have made this recipe for many, many years, but I'm gonna do a little modification to it to make it a little more prep friendly. Initially, the recipe calls for chocolate chips, and I did bring some in case anybody decides they wanna modify it and include the chocolate chips instead. I really like using uh, this particular kind of the mini chocolate chips so you get a little bit of chocolate flavor without having to add too many calories. Uh, the recipe also calls for honey. I'm going to be omitting the honey and instead of the honey and the chocolate chips, I'm going to be using a little bit of cocoa powder and some stevia. So it'll give it a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of sweet. It'll still give you that really great flavor, but without all the calories. First thing we're going to do is um, I've got two and a half cups of dry oatmeal. I'm going to just Mix it real quick in the food processor to get a little bit smaller pieces. Makes it a little bit easier to roll um, into the no-bake cookies. And I promise this time I'm not going to fling this across the kitchen. <laughs> right. Just needs a little bit, not a whole lot. I've got two and a half cups of oatmeal. Makes it almost like into a flour. Not quite. There's a little bit of chunks in there, but that's not a problem. And we're going to do um, a third cup of peanut butter. I'm actually going to be using a little bit more peanut butter since we're not using the honey. Uh, so that way it gives it a little bit more consistency. It won't be as dry and it'll be easier to form your cookies. I like using creamy peanut butter. You can also use ch the chunky peanut butter if that's your preference. But I find that uh, for this recipe, creamy butter, peanut butter use, works the best. So instead of a third of a cup, I'm actually gonna do half a cup. There. Something else that I do like to throw in, I actually use this every morning in my coffee too. It's really great flavor, there's no calories in it. Flavor God, topper, uh, the chocolate donut flavor is to die for. You can put it in lots of different things, but sprinkle a little on top of your coffee in the morning and it's excellent. So I'm actually gonna use a little bit of that in here too. We're also gonna be putting a little bit of that in our chocolate milkshake later. So this is some stevia. I'll sprinkle that in there. It's about mm. half a tablespoon or so. I'm going to do a tablespoon of, I like the special dark, the dark chocolate cocoa powder. just mix it all together. Yum. All right, so that's how you know this is real life. Um, 
I think because we're not using the honey and we have a lot of dry ingredients in here, I used more peanut butter. I used half a cup instead of a third, but I actually need more than that. So I'm gonna now scoop some more in. So you may have to adjust based on the consistency. Yes, right? yeah. exactly right. And it's a nice shoulder workout. Mm, uh, mixing it all together, so don't do it after you've done shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the workout was easy, then you can. <laughs> yeah. If it's Merlin approved, you will yeah. not be making these after. If it was Jay's workout, then you can easily <laughs> yeah, do it. Jay's workouts are easy. <laughs> but these are really great to make, and then you can just pop a bag of them in the freezer and take a couple out as, as needed. Um, but I've, you know, we've talked about this before. I think the biggest obstacle in anybody's fitness journey, uh, weight loss journey, is comes down to diet. Mm. So if you're not prepared, you know, it's so easy to grab something unhealthy. But if you have something that's high protein, and that has good fats in it, um, that's a snack like this that you can just grab out of the freezer. It makes it a lot easier to stay on track. But so you take them directly frozen from the fridge, uh, the freezer. How long does it take for you to eat it? You have, they have to thaw. Or yeah, just... you might want to give it like you know thirty minutes or something if you put it out at room temperature. Oh, okay. They have to be in the freezer, or you can put them in the fridge. You don't have to put them in the freezer um, no. because these are no bake. I mean, I think it sets a little bit better mm. at least if you put them in the fridge. But you don't have to put them in the freezer. Okay. They just last longer if you put them in the freezer. Oh, ah, okay. So if you want to make a big batch of them. I was going to say they would never you last long enough. <laughs> I'd eat them quick. Could you, could you put them in the microwave for like 10 seconds after taking them out of the freezer, do you think? Yeah, you could probably do that. You just yeah. don't want to leave it any longer than that because the peanut butter will melt. Oh, uh, yeah. Just make, so you can, if you're dying to eat it, you're like, all right, it's just got 10 seconds. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've even popped out of the freezer immediately and just started eating it because yeah. I think oh. it thaws fast enough, but okay. yeah, you might want to just give it 30 minutes or so at room temperature. So see, I added the peanut butter there yeah. and it's a lot better consistency, mm -hmm. especially without the honey that's... Kind of looks like a brownie a little bit. Like a keep little everything bit together there. So we'll keep working this and then when we're ready, All right. we'll get them on the parchment. All right. Hey, I think we finally got the right consistency. Yep. You got to play a little bit with the amount of peanut butter that you use to make sure that it's the right consistency. You do want it to be a little bit tacky, um, especially without the honey. Uh, you'll need to use a lot more peanut butter because you know it's it's already a little bit crumbly. So if you add a little bit more peanut butter, it binds all of the oatmeal and everything together. Yeah. So I have just like a regular um, cookie scooper. You can get these at I don't know, the grocery store. It's also like a miniature ice cream scooper, but I usually pack it in really well, make sure everything sticks together, and we just scoop it out into our little cookie balls here <laughs> on some parchment paper. These smell so good. I mean, I love peanut butter anyways, but yeah. with the chocolate and everything. How many, how many balls do you think it's going to make? This will probably do about two dozen. Oh. I think. Well, at this size. Yeah, yeah. They're not super yeah, they're, big. Yeah, they're pretty small. But it is the perfect snack size, in my opinion. You know, even if just one or two of them. Mm -hmm. um, if you're, at, you know, on the go, but you need get a little something in your system, and you don't want to grab a bag of chips. Yeah. <laughs> I would eat this at the movie theater. Yeah. I'd bring that in. Yeah. Kids like these. I bet. Especially with the chocolate chips in them. They're really, really good. Now you were saying something about the protein powder earlier. Right, so you can, instead of the cocoa powder, you can also substitute um, for chocolate protein powder. I like using casein, that's my preference. Mm -hmm. um, any other kind of chocolate whey protein is a good choice also. Uh, but you could use the chocolate protein powder in lieu of the um, cocoa powder in lieu of the chocolate chips. Okay. Still gives it some nice chocolate flavor. And then also if you did that, you'd get a little more protein, more than you would get so just from the peanut butter. Right. right. Awesome. 
All right. Okay, so I lied. It was not two dozen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you got one dozen. We got more than a dozen. Baker's dozen. Got, ooh, some of them are a little crumbly there. So two, four, six, eight. Yeah, Baker's dozen. Nice. Some of them got a little crumbly there, but what you want to do after you get them all in the parchment paper is throw them in the fridge or the freezer for at least a good hour and let everything set and then enjoy. Yes. All right, can we get a part two today? Yes. So all right. We're also going to be making a, a chocolate shake and not just like, you know, any kind of protein shake. You typically, you just put it in a shaker cup with either water or milk almond milk whatever you're so not the merlin kind no we're gonna be making this a little bit more upgraded <laughs> a little bit more like a wendy's frosty oh that's how what i like to think of it as at least my prep brain enjoys it that way <laughs> so we're gonna get start with a cup of ice i just add uh, some water you want to add a little bit more liquid than you would typically otherwise for a couple of reasons. I like casein protein. Um, and for this recipe specifically, casein is a little bit thicker, so it gives it a little bit more of a creamy texture. So casein is probably the preferred protein of choice. Um, and because it's thicker and we're also adding thickening agents to it, you also wanna add a little bit more liquid. So this is gonna be like a big voluminous chocolate protein shake, not just a, a little wimpy protein shake. So a bit more water. I'm going to measure out on the scale what I need for 25 grams of protein. There we go. And just like for the no bake peanut butter, I'm going to be using a little bit of the uh, Flavor God chocolate pro uh, chocolate donut flavor. This stuff is so good. Got to try it in your coffee. It's amazing. I'm also going to do one tablespoon of my cocoa powder. Make it extra chocolatey. Same thing. I have about um, half a tablespoon of stevia. Sweeten it up a little bit. And then this is where I think the magic happens with this, is we're gonna be using a little bit of xanthan gum and a little bit of guar gum. The xanthan gum will make it nice and thick and the guar gum will give it lots of volume. Uh, so it'll make it a lot more like a real milkshake. You don't need a lot. I'm using a quarter teaspoon measure and giving it maybe half, so like an eighth. You really just need a tiny little bit. A little goes a long way. And then we're gonna shake it up and put it in the blender and we'll see what it looks like. I also like these kind of blenders that will blend it right into the cup for you. It makes it a lot easier to drink. Yeah. All right. like that I need to shake it a little bit more or add a little bit more water Very you usually chocolatey. find that 30 seconds is about the magic number. 
All right, let's see what this looks like. You may have to eat it with a spoon. <laughs> you totally can, right? I prefer a, a straw. Wow. Looks like ice cream. Yeah. Just give it a little stir there. Wow. And that is it, my friend. Wow. This is one of my favorites, especially during prep when you feel a little bit like uh, dessert deprived. Yeah. Um, and it gives you a little bit more volume instead of just drinking a you know regular protein shake. Yeah. It takes a little bit longer, but definitely worth it. So I hope awesome. everybody enjoys. Thank you.